Greetings Sentinels fans! This is the big one, the missions and rewards. I anticipate this one being large enough that I will have to split it into multiple parts. After all, there are 25 mission cards, and each of them are double-sided, so I have essentially 50 cards to work through. I will also be scoring these missions. They're all worth getting, but sometimes it is best to know when to abandon or ignore a mission. So, without further ado, let's get to it. I'm scoring each of these missions on a scale of 1 to 5. 5 being good enough to grab at any time, and 1 being a mission you might want to consider ditching. My scores are based on my perception of how useful the reward is versus how difficult it is to accomplish the objective. Do note, even the cards that I score as a 1 can be incredibly useful. Always keep the context of the game in mind. I'll be going in alphabetical order by mission name, since that's how they are ordered in the app and in the wiki. So we will get started with a true hero in the end. This mission asks you to have heroes hit themselves 5 to 7 times for 2 damage each. Annoying, but not terribly difficult. My issue here is that these hits can only happen at the end of that player's turn, meaning that it is impossible to accomplish this task in one round, like you can with most missions, unless you have a later hero swap for it. You are also having your heroes hit themselves, which can get costly if you have some hero damage buffs going. It's also a mission that requires some fiddling, keeping track of what heroes go where so you can accomplish it in the first place. Its reward, a brother's sacrifice, is a very powerful single-use ongoing card. If any hero target would be destroyed for any reason, then you have this option to remove this card from the game, and for a single round, all your hero targets are undamageable. Safety for a full round can be quite helpful. As one comment on a previous video pointed out, you can even use this card combined with the Southwest Sentinels to kill the Effusion of Pain shield on its flip side without actually losing any heroes. But the fact that it is removed from the game after one use sours it for me a little bit. All the time and finickiness makes this reward seem less worth it. It's a powerful enough reward and makes it worth getting, but the mission is annoying enough to bring it down. I give this one a 2. Next up, we have a War-Torn Landscape. This is another mission that is more annoying than anything. It plays two environment cards at the end of that hero's turn, and asks you to clear the environment by the end of another hero's turn. This one also requires planning, since you have to have your friends ready to kill the environment cards in order to accomplish this. Of all the factors of an Oblivion game, I tend to ignore the environments the most, since there is so much other stuff to keep track of. Maybe you'll get lucky and grab cards that'll destroy themselves, but I wouldn't count on it. Accomplish this mission, and you get Cold War, who, Whenever you use more than one power a turn, deals 2 damage to 3 targets per extra power, and gives your hero an extra power used to use. This would only benefit heroes that have more than one power to begin with, or have rewards that give them powers. All said, the extra power use seems more useful than the additional damage, unless your hero has easy access to extra powers and power uses. But regardless, this reward requires some setup to be useful, and seems to only benefit a hero if that hero is already doing well. So annoying mission and lackluster reward gets this card a 1. So that was a bit of a sad start. But now we'll move on to a mission that I like, building a king. Which is a bit of a misnomer because Unity refers to the T-Rex as a big sister, but the word Rex means king and whatever. As missions go, building a king is middle of the road in terms of how easy it is. It requires on that hero's turn that they and their friends destroy and discard a combined 2 to 4 equipment cards. If you have one or two equipment based heroes, then this is easy. If you don't, then it's a bit harder but not impossible, as most decks have at least one or two. This all has to happen at once though, not spread out over a few rounds like other missions allow. Flip the mission and you get the T-Rex bot. Yes, my friends, you get to have your own pet T-Rex. The T-Rex bot is a target with 11 hit points, so decent staying power. Deals 9 damage at the end of that hero's turn, which is easily worth having it around. And it deals all non-hero targets 1 lightning damage whenever it gets hit, so pretty good bounce back damage as well. It also has the mechanical golem keyword, meaning that unity effects that affect golems can affect this. So if you have Termination Unity, you can summon it from the trash if it gets destroyed, or a few other things she can do. With how useful this one is, I will give it a 4. There are better rewards out there, but this is a solid one. Next is Citizen Storm. This mission only asks that you beat up a single bad guy. That's a simple enough task. Heck, 
Even the bad guys can help out in the fighting. Or you can send some leftover splash damage his way. The only downside is that at the end of that player's turn, Citizen Storm will attack one of your heroes for 3 damage. An amount that is hardly noticeable. And destroys one ongoing card. That is a touch more worrisome. You may note that for how difficult Oblivion is, it's actually very light on setup destruction. Usually setbacks involve your heroes dying and not breaking your stuff. But it should still be said that you can lose stuff to things like Citizen Storm, including many of the rewards. Beat up Citizen Storm and you get... Citizen Storm. Yeah, he's the only mission baddie that fully switches sides. And the things he did to you are exactly what he does to the bad guys. Your choice of 3 damage to 1 target, or destroy one ongoing card or environment card. But again, three damage is minuscule. And in the entire Oblivion scenario, there are only three villain ongoing cards. Two copies of Focus of Power and one copy of Impending Doom. You can get use out of the environment destruction if you need it, but overall, Citizen Storm is a bit underwhelming, but redeemed mostly by how easy it is to finish his mission. I give him a two. Now we will create a contraption. This mission is like building a king, except it requires more equipment cards and only by discard. However, you can spread out the discards, doing them on different rounds, all at once, or on a different hero turn. This mission is convenient in that any equipment cards will do in order to get points towards completion. Yeah, you can use discards for other missions to count towards this one, or you can even use unrelated effects. Get the points and you get Chekhov's Hairdryer an excellent weapon that deals 6 irreducible energy damage to 2 targets. 6 damage is great for 1 power use, and being able to hit 2 things with it allows you to get a lot done. You can use the irreducible damage to whittle down Voss, or you can nuke an Aeon Locus, or you can shoot at some mission targets. Contact Montgomery Industries and get your super hair dryer today! This one gets a score of 4, but it is pretty close to a 5. Next we have Demand of the Gods, and this... Yeah, I don't really like this one. It asks you to destroy 3 to 5 cards on that hero's turn. I suppose this can include hero and environment cards, but unless you're using heroes that break a lot of cards anyways, this will probably end up with you trying to kill a lot of Aeon men in one sitting. What's more, accomplish this task and you will get the Magic of the Ennead reward, where, as a power use, you can choose an element and deal 9 area of effect damage to all villain targets. That is a pretty solid hit, but then this card is removed from the game. It is a one-use card. So it asks you to do the near equivalent of the front side of the Source of Foes shield in order to do an effect that can be replicated by killing Boar. Yeah, that's just not good enough for the effort. Maybe you can take advantage of the objective's extra effect, where you send it to another hero so they maybe swap missions with another person. But that's just not a lot going for it. And it's a real shame too, because this is one of the cooler events in the lore, where Ra convinces the Ennead and Anubis to join forces with him, and they blast Oblivion, smashing his shield, proving that the cosmic entity can be fought before Oblivion nukes the lot of them. It's such a cool moment for such a disappointing card. This gets a 1. Next is the Enraged Terror Bird. It's another target, so another easy one. This one deals 2 melee damage to itself, but if it ever hits itself, it will be removed from the game, denying you the reward. The attack can be redirected to a hero, though. Take out its 8 hit points and you earn the loyalty of Arataki, an alternate universe Haka who becomes the primary Haka in the RPG timeline. She acts as a powerful tank, redirecting damage dealt to her hero and her hero's other targets to her, and she receives one less damage from all sources. Now because you have a time limit in Oblivion games, I find tanking strategies to not be quite as helpful as in classic games, but Arataki can be useful for saving your hurt heroes, protecting important targets, saving the carrier of the Oblivion Shard, or just denying a small amount of damage. For that, I give this card a 3. Next, we are going on an expedition to Atlantis. To accomplish this one, you need to discard 5-7 to seven cards, though you can spread them out over multiple turns, multiple heroes, and even as a result of other effects. It allows each player to discard two cards at the end of that player's turn. This one is even less picky than create a contraption, as any cards will do. Drop enough cards and you'll get the Atlantean Conduit. Its effect is simple. It gives its hero an extra card draw and an extra power. That isn't really all that much when you consider what mode we are in. Again, not every hero has a load of powers that they can benefit from having extra uses. And when you get a good strategy going, you are more likely to want to keep using the same power from out of turn. You also have to consider that this one requires your hero to have a bit of setup, 
So like Cold War, it pretty much is only a benefit if your hero is already doing well. I'm giving this a 2. But now we are going to do some stealing. Time for a filter heist. At the end of that player's turn, they must reveal the top three cards of their deck. If they get at least three keywords, then they get the reward. This is possible for every hero, since I believe they all have at least one one-shot, one ongoing card, and one limited card. And it becomes even easier for those with equipment cards, and those who have special keywords in their decks. So this mission is very easy to accomplish. Flip the card, and you get the Infinity Cannon. This card has the Gun keyword, so any of Expatriate's cards that interact with guns can interact with this. And this card has a power. First, you may either play an ammo card or draw a card. Then you may deal 5 damage to one target. 5 damage and a card draw is pretty solid for most characters. An expatriate can get a bit more use out of it with her ammo cards. Not quite as amazing as Chekhov's hairdryer, but great nonetheless. This card gets a 3. And now we have Form the Mecha Knight. This Power Rangers slash Voltron mission is ideal as vanity project, but it does get results. At the end of that player's turn, every hero in their battle zone gets the option to reveal, then draw or discard the next card in their deck. If every hero playing in this game is in the same battle zone, and they all choose to discard their cards, then the mission flips, and you get the Mecha Knight Ultra Strike. Or, as I'm sure Idealist puts it, Mecha Knight Ultra Strike! Kya! 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 This card gives you a power that deals a target 1 damage 5 times. Without buffs, this comes to 5 damage, but with a plus 1, you then get 10 damage. A plus 2, 15. A plus 3, 20. Give this to Mr. Fixer and watch all before you turn into red mist before your eyes. It's also a concept card, so we can interact with Idealist's deck, allowing for easy retrieval if it somehow gets destroyed, or you can stack fragments under it. Sadly, giving the Mecha Knight fragments does not increase its damage, but instead allows it to target more enemies. Still, this card's insane damage output earns it the first 5 on this list. And right off the bat, we get some great fortune. After taking this mission, at the end of that player's turn, they choose a card in their hand and then reveal the top card of their deck. If the two cards have at least one matching keyword, then you get your reward. I'd say you have equal chances of getting and not getting the reward on your first try. Though some decks are better at it than others. You can choose decks with a large concentration of one type of card, or decks with a lot of keywords to work with. Digital players have an extra advantage in that they can check their decks for what cards are still in there, while physical players will need to do some card counting like a clever blackjack player. If your gamble pays off, then you get a lucky break. This reward is amazing. At the end of that player's turn, they reveal the top card of their deck. Every player, including the reward's owner, gets to play a card that matches a keyword of the revealed card. Then that card is played. Yes, allowing 1 to 6 card plays for the low, low price of nothing can be fantastic. It's perfect for setup and damage blitzes. All you need to do is see where your luck takes you. We have our second 5 in a row right here. Coming up next, we have representatives from the Inversiverse. We start with the villain Hellion, an evil version of Fnatic. This is another target to beat up for your reward, so another easy mission. She does hit the mission's owner, and then all the heroes in the area, but she's not a very bad opponent. And when you send her back to Hell, you get a new ally, a good version of Apostate named Seraph. At the end of that player's turn, Seraph can deal up to 3 targets to Irreducible Radiant damage. That would make it on par with Cold War. However, first, it is irreducible damage, meaning you can chip away at Voss with it. Second, he has another ability, where if he has dealt radiant damage, he allows his player to either use a power or play a card. Now how would that be helpful, you may ask? After all, there are literally no bad guys in the Oblivion scenario that deal radiant damage. Outside of shenanigans like Twisted Aether, or the use of the Temple of Zhulong environment, how would that help? To which I have to remind you the same thing I have to remind people who don't understand Absolute Zero. Heroes are allowed to attack themselves. Have Seraph target himself with one of his three attacks, and you can get some work done. This character won't be a game changer, but it's solid help. He gets a 3. And now we have Hermetic Evolved. This is the gorgeous transformation that Hermetic gave himself while working his blood magic. He attacks all heroes, and all heroes hit this way, then attack themselves, making him a bit more dangerous for teams with damage boosts. 
However, take out his 11 hit points and you get to raid his lab and steal his bloodstone. I love the bloodstone. It's a wonderful safety net. Yeah, you need to discard a card every turn to keep it around. But if the hero carrying it would be killed, the bloodstone gets destroyed. That hero is healed to full hit points, and all other hero targets in the area heal 6. What's more, unlike a brother's sacrifice, you can use the bloodstone again once it activates. You just need to either retrieve it from the trash, or if that hero is unfortunate enough to get taken down after that, your next hero can pick it up. Easy to grab, cheap to maintain, and reusable? I think that gives the bloodstone a 5. And that's all for now. I have taken care of 13 of the missions and rewards. Next week, I'll take care of the other 12. Take care, friends. Contact Montgomery Industries and get your super hair dryer today. For the low, low price of $9.99. I don't know. <laughs> or, as I'm sure Idealist puts it, Mecha Knight, Ultra Strike, Kya! This is not a toy, kids. However, take out his 11 hit points and you get to raid his lab and steal his bloodstone. Damn it, Michel! <laughs> if you got that joke, you have good taste. <laughs>